So we have started the log and we have PLA inside the machine. At the moment, the PLA temperatures are right below 200 degrees. This is uh, perfectly located within the window of temperatures of operation of the DevoClean mid-temp. So we are uh, allowed to push the PLA out of the machine with the DevoClean mid-temp. But to do this, we want a nice and clean transition. We will need to remove all of the pellets, every single pellet of PLA out of the hopper before pouring this in to make sure we have a nice and clean transition. And we have two ways of doing this. Yeah, exactly. You can just either wait until the hopper is completely empty and you can see the screw. Uh, this can take quite some time. I want to speed up the process. So I'm gra grabbing a vacuum cleaner. Remove the grid first, and then you can clean out the entire hopper. So we emptied completely the, the hopper from the, all of the PLA pellets. We can now pour in some DevoClean mid-temp. At first, the output is going to be a mixture of PLA and DevoClean mid-temp, actually. So I'm putting in approximately 50 grams of DevoClean mid-temp, mm -hmm. and I will keep adding small portions of it until all of the PLA is completely gone from the barrel. And I will keep adding some because we're going to heat up the temperatures afterwards. So uh, from this point, we're just waiting until all the PLA is gone. And then when we increase the temperatures, we will keep adding some of Devil Clean, some Devil Clean mid -temp. Okay, just to make sure that the hopper never runs completely empty mm. and also that we don't have a completely full hopper because that's just not necessary. No. Yeah, so I'll keep an eye on the transitioning and yeah. we'll keep adding some of this. Sure. So now we can already see some Devil Clean mid -temp coming out. You can clearly see that it's, well, it's hard to see from there, but it, it might be a bit uh, mixed with the PLA. It's a bit glossy. So the rule of thumb here is that it should look like the pellets actually so we have to wait a couple of minutes so we waited a couple of minutes i see now we have quite a clean output of uh, definitely mid temp so it's time to start increasing the temperatures uh, without burning the previous pla so i'm gonna set all heaters to what do we do 300 degrees 300 degrees it's nice it's the in the overlap between the window of devil clean mid temp and devil clean high temp okay so I'm setting all heaters to 300 degrees. This will take some time. And in the meantime, we have to keep on refilling the hopper. We have finally reached 300 degrees Celsius and we still have a clear output of Devil Clean mid temp. It is now time to remove it and transition to the Devil Clean high temp. So we're going just like before to vacuum clean the Devil Clean mid temp out of the, the fume hood and put the, the Devil Clean high temp. Again, I am adding a small portion of it, about 50 grams, and I will keep adding some to push all of the Devil Clean mid temp out of the barrel. We will be able to see a visual transition, and I will keep adding, so adding some up to 400 degrees. Something I would like to mention is that we're using a fume extraction system. Most plastics release gases, and even though they are not always officially toxic, uh, Devil Clean mid temp for example, releases a white smoke, and it's always good to have such a system uh, to protect your, your, your breathing and it's much more pleasant to work with a fume hood. Uh, now that's it, we have put the Devil Clean high temp. We're just going to wait for a full transition and then we'll start heating up the temperatures again. A couple of minutes have passed and pure Devil Clean high temp is now coming out of the machine. I can see this because it's a lot more smooth and it looks a lot more clear white. And a th rule of thumb is that the output should more or less look like the input. And yeah, maybe you can see it on camera. It looks nice and white. And the DevClean mid temp, it had more of a grayish tone. So now we know that pure DevClean high temp is coming out. We can increase the temperatures to 400 degrees. And that's the last transitioning step before we can put in peak. So as you can see, we are currently purging with DevClean high temp. And this is what came out of the machine. So we can see two things. First, the Devil Clean high temp becomes a bit yellowish. That happens when you increase the temperatures above 360 degrees approximately. That's nothing, nothing to be concerned about. And also, and most importantly, we can see a lot of um, impurities and burnt particles coming out. Some black, some black particles you can see 
in these uh, bits of output. So it's a good sign. It, it means we're actually purging the machine in addition to, doing the, to, do the to be doing the transition. Uh, we're going to keep doing this and hopefully we can remove all of the burnt particles from inside the machine before reaching uh, 400 degrees. But that, that is the point and the strength of DevoClean High Temp. It is very good at removing all of the carbonized matter. After around 20 minutes, all heaters have finally reached 400 degrees Celsius. During this process, uh, Louis already showed that there was quite some dirt coming out while using the high temperature cleaning material. This is because it has quite a high cleaning capability because of its glass fiber content and a lot of contaminants and burnt particles from previous tests came out eventually at these high temperatures between 350 and 370. And this, this is why we continued purging the machine because we want to start our experiment with Peak with a completely clean machine because uh, that can really influence the quality of your produced filament and we don't want any contaminants in our material. Uh, yes, we are going to release a complete guide, a complete guide on how to purge the machine, why, the reason, the theoretical reasons and the th theoretical mechanisms in a separate videos. The link will be in the description as well. And what I would like to add is that it's very important not to do this step while being too hasty. It's very important to leave the machine stabilized at the starting temperatures you want because even though we have new nozzles that cannot pop out of the machine anymore, it's still important to avoid any clogging. And with peak, crystallization can happen very fast. Uh, so you really want to wait until the temperatures actually reach the high, high temperature they're supposed to, to, be, to be set on before putting the peak. Don't, don't rush uh, into this step and don't skip the end of this, of this process. Exactly, so at this point, all heaters are quite stable at 400 degrees. I also can see it in the log. I see quite a straight line of the temperature. So we can put a peak inside the machine. So I'll do exactly the same as we did before uh, during the transitioning phase. I'll just take the vacuum cleaner. Completely empty it. And I will, sp I will put a small portion of peak. Just as always, it's good to start small with a bit, a small portion, about 50 grams again. Uh, we will wait to have until we have a, a peak, a pure peak output. Now I'll, I'll, I'll keep filling the, the hopper with a bit of peak uh, until we have a completely clean and nice peak output. And again, if you time it correctly, you can take your peak straight after the drying step yeah. uh, and not lose any time, uh, time in the middle. At this point, we'll just wait for the peak to come out and we'll see. Yeah. We finally have our flow of peak coming out of this machine. In the beginning, when it first came out, it was still a bit mixed with the DevoClean high temp, and that's why the, the surface was very rough. So we decided to wait another 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, and then it started getting better and better. And the output of peak, you can recognize it because obviously it has quite a different color. And when it comes out, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but it's quite uh, translucent because that's the amorphous and molten state and as it cools down it crystallizes and then it becomes completely opaque and gets a light brownish color uh, yes so we have we have the the output of peak indeed it is a bit rough one reason could be that the nozzle is too cold the first step in the in the process after having gotten a some sort of output is to start fixing the obvious extrusion issues in that case the slight roughness we have to keep in mind that the pid controlling system um, learns over time how to adjust the temperatures so when you pour in your peak inside the machine you might disturb the, the stable, the steady state that the PID controlling system had found before you, you put the peak. So we just give it a bit more time yeah. uh, and we keep this in mind. Yeah, because peak has a different heat absorption, of course, and dif different heat capacity than the DevoClean high temp. So that will slightly disturb the PID control, but it learns from it. That's right. So that being said, we are going to uh, help the, the peak become a bit smoother by increasing the last heater by, by five degrees. And uh, at the moment, because you can see, I can gently pull on it. We can probably get some filament out of that. It has a good melt strength and a good viscosity overall. So in order to fix the issues that we cannot see with our naked eye, in that case, the tolerance, 
we're going to need the help of our sensor. So as soon as you can do so, you should place your filament with some cooling, of course, inside the sensor and through, uh, in between the, the, the two polar wheels to start letting the, um, the sensor do its job. And also because you're logging the experiment, you will keep, tr you will keep track Sorry. of all of this data. So that's what I just did. I placed the filament in between the two polar wheels and we will start collecting data on the computer and this over time will tell us um, how good the tolerance of our filament is. At this point, as I said, we are just going to increase by five degrees the last heater and we're just going to wait again for the sensor to control the, the wheels properly and we're going to give it a bit of time.